Hello and thank you so much for joining us on this week's episode of the program. It's Lens on Maritime, where we'll bring to you breaking news and top happenings in the maritime sector. My name is Brown Swinton, and I'm your host. And um, of course, every week we go around the maritime sector to serve you the very best of stories you don't see anywhere. But first, let's take a very quick break. When we come back, we'll serve you all the details. Don't go away. At International Supply Chain Systems Limited, ISCS, we provide our clients with customized import-export services to meet their unique needs. We understand that timeliness is key to saving from their marriage. That's why we have a team of professionals to assist you with proper paperwork for efficient customs clearing. Our services include cargo clearing and consolidation shipping, cargo warehousing and storage, general import and consultancy. Come talk to us today at 7A Ibikune Akinte Street, Apapa, Lagos. You can call us on 081-6227-1120, 081-2763-3510, or you can send us an email, info at iscslimited.com. For more information, visit our website, www.iscslimited.com. ISCS, more than logistics. Welcome back. Now, this week was a very busy week in the maritime sector as different agencies, associations took turns in having different events. Now, here are some of the stories that made the rounds during the week. The National Vice President of Association of Nigerian Licensed Customs Agents, Analka Dr. Kayode Farinto, says importers and their agents have incurred demorages worth over 40 billion naira and still counting due to the suspension of GT Bank PLC from custom duty collection as a result of the bank's inability to remit collected funds to the federal government coffers. Dr. Farrington, in a chat with journalists, recently lamented that the suspension of the bank has resulted to over 400,000 consignments being trapped across port in Nigeria and called on the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, to investigate the bank's activities. Well, first and foremost, I need to correct an impression. The, the, the amount that Nigerian importers have, are losing, not lost, are losing as a result of storages and uh, demorages. Because loss is when you think the problem is over. The problem is not yet over. These consignments are still trapped in the port and the agent cannot clear them. And uh, even some who have made assessment cannot, uh, cannot pay duty and other charges. It's running over into over 40 billion now. And that's very, very unfortunate. And we have a situation on ground where nobody is talking to Nigerians. Nobody is talking to our stakeholders. Nobody is talking to freight forwarders. Neither is anybody talking to a custom broker. And that's why we say there's need for us to make the world know what is happening in the, in the maritime industry. We have a situation where GTB must have aired a uh, true issue of reconciliation. From the grapevine, we had that GTB has not remitted hundreds of billions into the Federation account, having collected this money on behalf of the federal government. And uh, she was suspended. She was advised by the uh, uh, House of uh, Either Customs and Excise, directed the Customs Committee on Customs, National House of Assembly, directed the Customs to suspend uh, GTBs uh, from the portal. GTB has been suspended and people are actually trapped. As I talk to you now, there are over 4,000 containers throughout the whole Federation who open their formem through GTB and cannot proceed further, haven't gotten their pre arrival assessment report because you must pay the duty through the bank where you are, the commercial bank or the dealer bank where you have opened your formem. People are trapped now and there are over 40 percent of vehicles that need to be cleared from the seaport who have gotten assessment that can also move forward, they are trapped, 
they cannot go ahead. There are about 10% of people who have actually even paid duty, but as a result of the suspension, the status does not change in the, in the, in the part of customs and they cannot move forward in the area of clearance of this good. Recall that the Nigerian Customs Service, NCS, had two weeks ago announced the suspension of duty bank from collection of import duty payments on cargoes, thereby subjecting importers and clearing agents to suffer huge demurrages at the ports. By virtue of customs uh, operations, customs is supposed to be supervised by the Federal Ministry of Finance and it is the Federal Ministry of Finance that actually approved this number of banks that, does, I mean, that do duty collection on behalf of the federal government. And where there are issues, there should be engagement from Nigerian Customs Service in line with World Customs Organizations directive. There ought to be engagement before even removing them from Porter, before the summary suspension. There ought to be a stakeholder engagement and said, in the next 72 hours, GTB will be removed from the Porter. In view of that, please let us inform the trading community. There's nothing like that. And that's why I say we have a custom that is very docile, very lazy, and not practicing in line with international best practice. And it is unfortunate we are getting it in this administration. In view of this, the National Vice President of ANALCA has called on all its members to keep record of demurrages paid during this period as the association will ensure GT Bank is responsible for the payments. And that's why I say the Governing Council will be having an, their, their meeting by this Thursday. I'm going to raise it under national emergency and that we are going to move a motion that whatever demurrages and storages that accrue as a result of the inability of freight forwarders and importers to clear their cargo from the seaport, GTB should be responsible for it. That's why we've been calling on all our chapter chairmen and all the associations to continue to collate data, collate assessment, collate demurrages and debit note from now so that by the time the time by the time we you no know, no sit down and look at the issue of GTB and we're looking at it and okay GTB these are your responsibility you have to pay back this money to the importers and we must make sure it is done. The lingering crisis rocking the Association of Nigerian Licensed Customs Agents, ANALCA, will soon be a thing of the past as the Board of Trustees, BOT, and the National Executive Council, NECOM, are ready to shift grounds to broker peace for the association. The genesis of the crisis, which is linked to the leadership tussle of the Board of Trustees of ANALCA, has placed freight forwarders at the receiving end as they continue to suffer unfavorable government policies within the port and land borders. I handed this from terminal operators and shipping companies. Chairman of BOT, Taiwo Mustafa, in an exclusive chat with Nigeria Maritime TV, decried the extent of the crisis, faulting the NECOM for failing to nip the issue at the board, hence the escalation. So immediately after the election, we were all happy, okay, the election has come and gone, despite the fact that the former president was having his own candidate, but his candidate didn't win. He had no option than to hand over to whoever has won. So he had to hand over to Tony Ju, who won the election with three votes. And the norm within the board is that each time there is any key location coming up in the association, a day before the board will meet to harmonize our position so that when we get to either the National Executive Com uh, 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 Council, that's NEC. So the board will already have our own position on what we want to present. So not when we get there, we start any argument within ourselves. So it was agreed a day before that we should conduct another election in view of what we have already agreed before, that after the National Executive I mean, uh, uh, Committee uh, uh, election, Whoever comes up as the president, we're going to have another election for the position of the Board of Trustees Chairman. So we agreed and we decided that night we should have another election. Of course, Ernie Njoku kicked against it that we shouldn't hold any election. Peter will be kicked against it. But we looked at it within ourselves. We are each in the board. So two cannot override eight of us, I mean the remaining six. So we went ahead, conducted the election. So it was three, I mean it was five 
votes against two. Why one person, the late arrest one issue to Mihala for giving wherever he is, decided to abstain on the basis that he was pleading with both parties. Let's agree within ourselves, don't let us quarrel, don't let us fight. So, on that night, of course, it created issues within us. We all left. So, and that was the beginning of the crisis. So, after several attempts to resolve the crisis, Taiwo Mustafa believes if the following grounds are shifted, it will be a good place to start. The peace to reign. We are five on our own side. They should bring four from their own side to join our four, so we work as both. That is key issue there. Then we find a way around all the other issues. We find a way around all the other issues. I came up and said, wait. Number one, the crisis started from the board. Let's go back to the same board issue. You have elected some people as your own board members. We still have our own board. Henry Joku, are you still interested to continue as a board? Because I've been hearing that you say you have resigned, you have he said no, he's no longer interested. I say fine. Obi, are you still interested? He said he's no longer interested. Because both of them have gone to cancel CRFF. So okay, fine. I arrest on issue two is dead. So remaining five of us out of eight. The board is supposed to be nine. I say let's take four from the other board. Let's take four names. Join in with these five. So form a new board. That's one. I say you guys have gone to Uweri to amend the constitution to increase the tenor of the 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 national executive and the single tenor. to single tenor of five years for the national executive, four years for the chapter executive, six years for the board. I said, what we're going to do there is, despite the fact that we were not part of that constitutional amendment that you guys have done, but in the interest of peace, let's take it that way. So, for the remaining part of the regime, between this April 16 to April 16 next year, which is one year more, let your national executive remain in the office. We will work with them. The chapter executives as well, let them enjoy the same privilege. Their tenor has expired. Let them remain for another one year for, to make their own four years as well. And why I'm suggesting that is that both our board and your board, then the national executive and our own boys in the chapter executive, they will be able to come back together, laugh together, just together the way it used to be. So the National Association of Government Appropriate Freight Forwarders, NAGAV, has charged all newly inaugurated ESCOs to be role model and obey all government regulations in their various chapters. The national president of the association for the Tochiko Ezesi in his opening remarks said the newly elected chapter executives are to align with the dream of NAGAF, which is to strive for compliance and professionalism. For the past two months, we have been in the process of searching for the new leaders who will take charge of our chapters in the Western Zone and sustain the core vision and mission of Naga. As a result, we have anthologized through ballot electoral process individual practicing freight forwarders who were elected from the Naga chapters in the Western Zone. Consequently, we consulted this gathering today to inaugurate the newly elected chapter executive in the western zone of Naga. Who will work together with me and my national officers to drive and shape policy formulation of Naga for the next four years of my administration. And under my leadership in the continuity of our reinforcement strategies is sustaining freight forwarding professionalism in Nigeria.
My God found that Dr. Boniface Anibodam in his goodwill message employ all freight forwarders to be compliant with government rules and regulations in the ports and make an honest declaration to custom as this is the only way to be in good terms with the government. The freight forwarders must learn to understand that life is dynamic, things are changing. For instance, if you listen to the customs, they have put it in its perspective. But at the national level, there is issue of revenue. And it's becoming clearer that the IGR, the internally generated revenue, <laughs> is adding more value now. And so the government is keen to block all the growth that lead to revenue leakages. So you, you must start it on. If you come to Naga Fit Quarters to come and tell us stories of whatever, just know that your hands must be clean. And if your hand is not clean, I will not want to be part of that solution. And I will not want to go and ask an agent of the government to bend the rule or do what is not right. But Naga will stand for you we are, you are doing the right thing, and somebody, because he is an agent of the government, decided to cause an action that will be to a detriment. On their part, different agencies in the port were congratulating the new chapter Exco's call on freight forwarders to be the change they want to see in the ports. The responsibility of the new lead of inaugurated executive is, is necessary. You have to understand that you need to move the association forward. You need to be a unifier. You need to run inclusive government. Do not give any veteran behind. This association is a professional association. You have to you have you to engage in training and retaining of your members because the war, this, uh, this association of the forwarders is an international agency and you have to forward, you have to be in line with global practices. My controller said his words that I should congratulate the Nagar as a body for being able to be executive of various chapters in place and he said I should congratulate all the newly inaugurated officers of uh, Nagar. Also he said I should remind Nagar that Nagar has been an outstanding agency and an ally of the Nigerian Customs Service I can also, as a person, attest to that. For those that have uh, a proper port here, we know that we always have synergy with Naga every now and then. Uh, Naga, as I know, we are working, or we are going to work especially with those at the World Ritana Mohammed International Airport. One word that the commander gave me while I was coming is advise them to know your customers because that is where we normally have some issues to resolve when the freight forwarders and to those that have been elected and have been inaugurated today i congratulate you most especially our members from mmia All right, those were the stories uh, that made the rounds during the week. Uh, of course, uh, Nagaf members have been, uh, chapter exclusives have been charged to be role models in the port. But that also called for us to always have adequate declarations by freight forwarders. And also the anarcho crisis, we hope that someday um, this war in faction will be able to shake hands with each other again. I mean, uh, what a week it has been. Now, let's look at some other issues making the headlines at this time. Now, let's 
look at this week's issue that is making the rounds. Now, shippers are complaining about the activities of AP Mola Terminal. Uh, I mean, I, I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag, but let me bring in um, Comrade Stephen Ibe. He's the national president of the Patriot Anti-Corruption Initiative. He joins me this time. At International Supply Chain Systems Limited, ISCS, we provide our clients with customized import-export services to meet their unique needs. We understand that timeliness is key to saving from damage. That's why we have a team of professionals to assist you with proper paperwork for efficient customs clearing. Our services include cargo clearing and consolidation shipping, cargo warehousing and storage, general import and consultancy. Come talk to us today at 7A Ibikunle Akinte Street, Apapa, Lagos. You can call us on 081-6227-1120, 081-2763-3510, or you can send us an email, info at iscslimited.com. For more information, visit our website, www.iscslimited.com. ISCS, more than logistics. Do you want your cargo cleared as fast as possible? At Matix Global Food Limited, we are experts in import, export, and customs brokerage. Visit us today at number 1 slash 3 Crick Road at Papa Lagos or call 080-306-35769 or 070-270-31487. You can also email us at matixglobal23 at yahoo.com. Matex Global Ford Limited. Proudly Nigerian, proudly global. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us on the program today. Thank you for having me, my brother. All right. Bro. <laughs> now, let's look at the activities of um, AP Mola. They have been complaints about um, how it takes like up to two weeks for cargo to leave the port even when the shipping companies is saying we have just five free days and then demorage accrued and all of that and then we are wondering why um, this continuous delay and um, with your experience what do you think the challenge is uh, right there at ap mola thank you very much my brother uh, the issue of ap mola you know the petrol and the commercial initiative I've been crying like a lonely bed in the wilderness. But the issue is that we will continue. This is the work we are here to do, fighting corruption. But why would I, I have to call it corruption? Because when you have an agreement with somebody to do something, and after signing the MOU, and that person goes out on your agreement with that person, yeah, is that is corruption. Why will I say this? There is before AP Mola took over a papa over a papa premier port as the port concessionaires. There was an MOU signed dolly with the Nigerian Port Authority. But from what we know today is that the reverse is the answer. Whatever that is in that agreement was not implemented by AP Mola since then till then and that is the root cause of the problem we are having today that is what is the root cause of the problem that the AP Mola don't have equipment to run a Papa Premier Port Papa Premier Port is one of the biggest ports in Africa let me just not go far but let's just call, call, it, call it in Africa here a Papa Premier Port so the, uh, you cannot run, go and run the Republic of Bene terminal with a certain equipment and bring the same kind of uh, size of equipment into a proper port. Even think and there to use it to run our wire. You cannot, you can't go. Recently, I went to school. I did, I did uh, port, port management. You know, mathematics have what it takes to have the answer. Mathematics have method. Once you apply the method of that, uh, that uh, this thing, you see the answer appear. Mm. So what am I saying? There is a number of equipment that is supposed to 
apply in our papa port, everything will start working 100% correct. You will not see what you are seeing today. One, forklifts. There's a number of forklifts supposed to, to use to receive containers when the ship arrives. Because when the ship arrives, you're supposed to be receiving containers. You're supposed to be delivering containers to those trucks that came in to take delivery. Mm. You're supposed to be receiving empty containers that are coming out from the, the coming out, coming inside from out. Empty containers, you're supposed to be receiving them. You're supposed to be doing all sorts of things. Do, the port operation is hour to hour, 24 hours, non-stop. Once you stop a port operation, one minute, it jeopardizes the whole thing. That is the problem we are having today. So, you are supposed to have equipment. There is number of equipment you are supposed to have. The people are not it. They are just deceiving themselves. There is a number of forklifts supposed to have down to, to receive containers and cargoes from the ship. But how, how there is this no, wait, 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 there, there is number of equipment that is supposed to have down that will be dropping empty containers that are coming hour to hour. To from morning. Well, finally, because time is fast spent on the program, mm. what's what's the way forward? What should government be doing right now to um, AP Mola Terminal? What government should do is that AP Mola should be called to order to do what they knew they, they're supposed to do. Just like I said earlier, there are numbers of forklifts that are supposed to be inside the port so that this thing you see will not be happening. Once they, once you, because what they do most of the time, sometimes they will not take, give people that come to carry their container. They will say they are receiving cargoes from the ship. They are, they, when the ship arrives, no, no loading. When they start uh, accepting, uh, even most of this time, they refuse to accept empty containers. You go, go truckers will be carrying empty containers going up and down. We are outside to go and, and start drop the empty containers because of what lack of equipment. So, every man should be brought to to line to do MPA before they assign the, the power body to them. They know all these things we are talking about. There is a number of forklifts that will, will be applied inside the port, and the port will start to operating efficiently mm -hmm. and that is the problem everyone should be compelled to induce enough equipment in the port and a papa port so that a papa will come back to life and meet up Failure the standards if they don't want to do it let them leave up in nigeria we look for the problem. so many companies in nigeria here that can do do it and do it perfectly all right uh, i mean it's, it's a conversation that we will continue because i mean uh, just like you rightly mentioned the fallout of all of this is inflation that we are suffering right now that we hope that governments will really wade into some of these issues. Next week, um, of course, um, Comrade Steve, uh, Stephen Ibe will also be here to um, give us some more updates if there will, be, uh, there will have been improvements in the issue. Thank you so much for your thoughts with us today on the program. Thank you very much for having me. All right. And a special thanks to Comrade Stephen Ibe of the Patriot Anti-Corruption Initiative for um, always sharing his thoughts with us on the program today. Now, don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms uh, displayed on your screen right now. Now, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, what are you waiting for? So go to YouTube right now, type Nigeria Maritime TV, subscribe to be ahead of your pairs as far as Maritime Stories is concerned, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Until we meet again next week, please stay safe.